Hey everyone, this is Mukesh Chutwani once again from learn-innovation.com. Today in this video, we are going to talk about string in Python. So in the last lecture, we already discussed about the different kind of data type we have in Python. But today we'll talk about string in detail. So this video is going to be a little long. So please uh, stick with me because this string class is very important when it comes to Python or any other programming language. So this session is going to be very interesting because we are going to discuss a couple of things in this video. So we'll start with what exactly string, couple of built-in methods that we have in string. Then we'll talk about few escape sequences that are frequently getting used when you work with Python. Then we are going to talk about very interesting concept of indexing and slicing in Python. And we will be ending this session with format methods or maybe we can quickly cover these format methods along with the built-in methods that we have. Okay. So, so strings in python is nothing but a sequence of characters right so not only in python you take any other programming language string is a sequence of characters so we don't have actually character data type in python so whatever we have it's all about string so even if you have to start with character it has to be in a form of string string in python can be represented by double quotes or single code it doesn't matter okay but if you talk about Java and if we give in single quotes, it will consider as a character. But in Python, it's very straightforward. It's all about double quotes or single quotes. It will be a string. OK, so let me show you uh, through examples and then we'll start again with the indexing and slices. So let me go back to my PyCharm. So in the last video, we discussed about this idle, right? So we have done everything in idle. Now I want to show you a couple of interesting features from PyCharm that will give you uh, so many useful information about the string class so i will be using pycharm now but in case if you want to still work with ideally or any other editor it's completely up to you okay so let me create a string class here uh, sorry let me create a python file and that we will be using for our demo so let me give here string demo and now i will be writing a couple of strings so let's create a variable so i will give this variable as let's say first name okay i will be using underscore first name let's say my first name is Mukesh then I will be using another variable called last name last underscore name equal to Otwani so this time I will give single quotes okay so you can say if double quotes accepted single quote accepted so if I just say print first name and if I say print last name and I will simply right click and run string demo and you can say it is accepting so first string was in double quotes it worked second was in single quote it worked it means we can use both now how can we do the concatenation so again it's very easy in python you just say first name use plus operator for concat operation and just say last name and now you can say this run item run icon right you can say run and this time you can say we got mukesh Otwani. so now if you want to put one space in between what you can do you can just give plus and in double quotes you give one space that is acceptable again the moment you run this you see we got output with a proper space now let me just put a comment or maybe we can continue here because because of dynamic typing we can reassign the same variable so i will give here full name okay and i will do first name plus space and i will say last name so I can use this full name variable now from the now onwards. So let me take another string and this this is going to be a little interesting. What if I want to say that I don't. OK, I will be using now single quotes. OK, and I will say I don't know any programming language. Now, if I try to print this, you just say name and let's see what exactly is going to return. So just focus only the last one. Okay, this is the previous output that's fine. You just focus on the last output. So you can see it still works. So in double quotes, you can mention single quotes as well and it will accept. But you cannot do the reverse process. It means if I just say, okay, this and this. So when you do in this way, right now, Python will get confused because you are ending one string here, but you're not starting a new string from here. So when you have a single code in between the strings, always go with the double quotes at, at the starting. OK. And uh, double quotes in the end. In between, you can have the single code that is acceptable. Perfect. Let's see the new things. 
okay another example so let's say i want to have double quotes in the output so right now i showed you the single uh, quote right what if i want double quote so let's say i have another string and this string i will say automation or let's say any programming language okay so what i will say uh, let's say i want double quotes also as part of my output and this time let's say if i say uh, python and i want this also an output so how can i do that if i say this and if i say programming okay it says invalid syntax so what you can do if you want to have double quotes as an output now you can use escape sequence so if you say one backward slash okay and one backward slash here so what it will do it will escape this particular double quote okay now it will not consider this as a string it will escape this so now the moment you run this time you will see python in double quotes can you see this because this time you have used one backward slash before double quotes it will skip and same we did here so this is one of the escape character that we have used let me show you two more interesting uh, escape sequence that we are going to use and they are very frequently used i hope it is clear so what i will do i will just do control c and let me do control v and this time i will say string demo 2 so that you will have reference for all the examples definitely i will be sharing all these examples in the description or i will upload on my blog you can go ahead and refer but i would highly recommend you try from your end because it's very easy it is just you need to write the strings okay so let's create another string and this string i will give as let's say name again and in double quotes i will say i know python so if i use one escape sequence called slash t so what t represent here it means tab okay so let me let's say i have a string like this i know python and if i simply print this and name and let's right click string demo 2 and you can see it says i know python is coming since i don't have any space in between so it is printing as it is what if i say one backward slash and t okay this time if i just right click or run or i can use this uh, this run button and you can see right now it created a tab now same thing if i want to show you for another one so let me just copy paste and this time uh, i will use an n means new line okay so let's run this run from here so you can see the i know is coming first then after this we are saying new line so this python is coming from the new line okay so forward uh, backward slash t for tab backward slash n for new line and if we simply use one backward slash it is escape character it will escape the next character okay and in case let's say i don't want both the output i don't want these one so i can use a comment here so you can see if i use hashtag and hashtag again it will add this as a comment and python will not execute this statement okay so this time if i simply execute you can see it says i know python okay i hope it is clear so what if i want to use both yes you can do that so let's say again if i remove everything and if i run it says i know python so first time i will say slash t then i will say slash n backward slash t backward slash n and if i run this time it's i then tab no new line python okay quite easy now let's have a few interesting methods which is again built-in methods in a string class okay so before we move ahead i just want to show you a type method again so this type method we have used multiple times in the last lecture right so this time let's say i want to know the type of this name which is nothing but string right so this will definitely give me what kind of variable i'm using so i will be adding this in a print method so this time i will say print and i will use type method and i will be using name so it should return me what exactly the type is and you can see it's a str as i mentioned earlier it is represented by str and each data type in python is a class okay straightforward let's create another class and we'll see a couple of bintel methods so this time i will say string demo 3 and here we go 
Okay, so let's create a string. This string I will give as a normal sentence. So you can say SENT. You can give any name. And this time I'm going to write a small string. And this string will be I love. So let's use the first method from the string again you can go in any order at is just i'm starting from the one random order but you can practice these methods in any order okay so let me show you first method called length method so if i want to calculate the length of this string so i can call length which is len and i will simply provide the string here and first time if you see right now when i click on run it is still referring to my old configuration which is string demo 2 what if i want this configuration to come here so first time i have to run from here then this string demo 3 will come then i can continue with this okay so first time when you run your program just right click run from here and then you can continue with this button okay so you can see it is giving 13 so let's see this is one now again one thing to notice when you call the length method it also includes the white spaces okay so one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, white space. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. So output is thirteen. It means length method is working fine. Now, in case if you want to know the documentation, how exactly this method is working, or what is the definition, and what exactly it will return, I will show you how you can do that. But let me show you a couple of more methods, and then I will show the documentation. So again, in the next statement, again I will be calling print. And this time I will say name, which is nothing but our variable. Then let's say I, okay, so actually it's a sentence. And this time if I say I need the index, so you can actually get the index of a specific character. So let's say I need the index of L. So if I just say index of single quotes or double quotes L, it should return me the index. So if you see the output index is two because 0 1 and 2 right perfect what if i want index of i okay 0 but what if i give some and any other value or the character which does not even exist okay in that case it will simply give you one value error called substring not found okay so python is smart enough it will give you exactly error what kind of error you're getting so you just need to focus what exactly we're getting so in our case it says simply says substring not found which is fair enough so i will go ahead and i will just get p means python p and if i want the index i got the index as seven now let's do one more thing again i will say i want to replace p with j because we also have c python we have jython we have python so let's say i want to replace j or i want to replace p with j which is jython so again i will say sentence dot replace so what i want to replace i want to replace python p with j which is jython now this time when i execute you can see i got jython it means you're using replace method you can replace the characters or you can replace the series of characters as well okay so let's say i want to replace py with jk okay this sentence will not make any sense but still i want to show you that it can replace series of characters as well yeah we get to know what exactly each method is doing so first of all the moment you say that string dot you will get all these methods right but in case if you want the uh, the documentation of this okay you just First of all, let's say I want to explore about the split method that we haven't discussed now. Okay, so in case if you want to know the documentation, just press control from the keyboard and put mouse over and click on it. So you can see we got one file called builtins.py file and here you will get the documentation of that particular method. Okay, so whatever methods we will be using, you will find everything within this file. So I would highly recommend you to watch uh, this file and understand what exactly the methods is returning what exactly they're doing okay so since i'm covering anyways these frequently used methods you don't need to worry but still i would highly recommend you to read the documentation because it will also give you additional methods that we cannot cover in this video right so let me show you what if i simply split this so again i will call print 
and this is my sentence and this time I will say I want to split when I want to split the moment I get let's say P I want to split the string so I will say single quotes P and again I will give capital P and let's execute this okay so you can see now it has divided my complete string into two part and it is returning me a list so you can see this is a list and don't worry we did we did not discuss about the list till now in the next lecture we are going to talk about list dictionary tuple set in detail but you can see this is one part before p this is the one part right and after p this is the second part so this is coming as a list and then we can get any value from that list let me show you another split again i will say print this is my sentence and this time i want to split with space right because i have two white spaces just after i and just after love so it will actually give me a, again a list so you can see i love python so these are actually three records we got and these records are coming in a list perfect now apart from that we have so many methods i want you to explore but quickly i will cover other methods as well and it's quite easy to predict the outcome if I want to convert my string into uppercase, I will say upper. If I want to convert my string into lowercase, I will say lower. Yeah. And in case, okay, let me just run it first. And you can see it is in uppercase, it is in lowercase. Now, I just want to create a line between. So let me just put star so that we can see the modules now. This is first part, second part. So this time if I say, uh, let me just change this string and this time I will just say I small, L small and P small. Okay. And again, I will say print sent, which is sent sentence. And this time if I say title, okay, and just run this. Okay. So you can see the output, right? So the moment you put mouse over and press control from the keyboard. It says it returns a version of the string where each word is title cased. Okay, so this is how the title method works. Apart from this, also we have swipe case, we have is lower, is upper, we have a couple of other methods which will return you true and false. Let me show you three more methods. If I say is this, can you say is and we have a couple of is method like is title is space is printable numeric lower digit decimal ascii it's up to you i will be using two three more so remaining you can explore so is this lower complete string is lower yes right so the moment i execute and we got true and if i just call the other method which is opposite of this method if i say send dot is upper which is definitely not right because all are in small so it will give you false so let me cover the last method of this lecture called count so if i want to calculate if i say send dot count i need to provide which character i want to count okay so let's say i want to count how many times o is coming so in single quotes or in double quotes i can provide o and it should return me the count but the moment you run this and you can see we got the count what if I say some more thing, let's say O20. So this time we have one more O. So this time it should give me count as three and it's working. So see the beauty of Python for each and everything. We have very handy methods. You don't need to write much code. Everything is available as part of methods. You just call these methods, you will get the result and you can continue with a complete program, right? Now, if you understand this part, let's talk about the indexing and slicing. Or maybe let's talk about the format method, which is very useful. And we have to use this almost every single day, the moment you start working with real applications. Okay. So let me close everything. I hope it is clear now. In case if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comment section. So maybe I will quickly create another Python file. And this time I will give string demo four. Now let's assume that I have one variable called name and this time okay, let's call Python. Okay. And now if I want to print this, I will say I know 
and we used to say this one right that I know Python so right click and it says I know Python so this is how we used to concat right one string is fixed I have another string I used to call the plus operator and if we used to do the concat operation but now let me show you a format method and let me show you how this format method works so if I say name dot format or maybe first I will create another string and I will say uh, my language and in double quotes first of all I will say I know and I will use curly braces open and close okay and then I will say dot format method and here I will be calling name okay let's let's comment it out first of all and here I will say I know Python so what exactly it will do it will replace Python words with this okay so this curly braces will be replaced with this particular string so if you want to see the output just okay sorry we haven't done the print statement yeah so I will simply say print and I will say my lang which is my language and just execute so you can see exactly it has replaced Python from this curly braces what if I want to write something let's say Java again execute and you can see it is getting replaced so what if I want to okay instead of hard coding what if we have some variables and you want to assign some variables we can do that so instead of hard coding this one I can just provide the variable and this will be replaced so what if I have multiple variables can we replace multiple variables yes definitely so let's say if I say this is my first language okay I hope you understood this so anyways I can comment this time and this one let's say I will say I know Java what if I say I want to have multiple curly braces is it possible yes it is possible it is just you need to pass the same number of arguments here for example I want to replace first one with Java second one with Python okay since we are doing Python series let's keep Python at first then I will have Java then I will add one more string call let's say JavaScript so Python will be replaced here then Java will be replaced at the second index sorry it's a 0 1 2 okay so this is first second third but when it comes to index it's 0 1 2 so this time when I simply run this you can see it all got replaced I know Python Java and JavaScript what if I want to change the order okay you can just change the order and the same will be reflected here now if you don't want to do in this case we can also provide the indexes because by default internally Python is handling this with the help of index for example if I just say this is 0 this is one this is two which is internal this is how it is happening but still just to show you it is printing I know Python Java and JavaScript but what if I say I want JavaScript first then Java and keep Python at last will it work yes so you can see since this was zero this was one this was two so I just said two one and zero so this is also supported in Python that you can pass the index and you can continue now there's one more variation which exists and which uh, you will see in most of the cases what if I just replace this with key value pairs okay so sometimes index passing index 0 1 2 is not that handy because sometimes you need to remember right now you can see total values are 3 so it's easy for us to remember that 0 stand for Python 1 stand for Java and 2 stand for JavaScript right but when you have a huge uh, number of values then it will be little tough for you to remember this indexing in that case you can have the keys so let me show you how it works for this let me create another uh, string okay I can reuse the same uh, variable because of dynamic typing here this time I will say I know curly braces curly braces okay curly braces and this time I will say format so instead of giving direct value 
this time I will be assigning some key and then value okay so let's say for Python I will say P and then Python when I say P it will represent Python now okay J will represent JavaScript sorry Java now so I will say Java and JS will represent JavaScript okay or you can you go ahead with single quotes double quotes I will continue with single quotes so that we can have the uni uniform code yeah so instead of giving index I can now simply give that I know P for Python and we have J for Java and JS for JavaScript right and now this time if I print you will see we will get the same output but this looks okay so you can see right it is not two times java it is just because of this it's saying i will say java underscore script now this is actually making little sense now instead of giving the index i can give the key and this key is associated with value yeah it's clear now just last sentence which i want to highlight that make sure that you have the same number of arguments so in case let's say i add one more okay and in the format method i'm only passing three will it work or not let's see the moment you run this it will say index out of range because it is expecting one more that you have not passed if you see the output right this is not getting fulfilled so actually in the format we have provided three but it is expecting four so make sure you get the exact number of um, argument in the format method okay now the last thing before we end this video and this is going to make this task again more easy so again let me copy this and paste in my folder or our project so now we are string demo 5 okay so let's see the next thing called f strings or we can call this as a formatting string literals okay so let me show you one example first then you will get the clarity what exactly we are doing so till now what we did in order to add two strings we did concat operation using plus then we use format method right now i'm going to show you a new thing called f strings so if i say my name is name okay so i'm trying to get this value which is equal to mukesh but i'm giving in double quote so definitely it's a string right so the moment i say right click run is you can say it is printing as it is because it is in double quotes so is there any way that we can get this value yes you just need to type f here okay and now you can see it has changed the color coding now it is replacing this with actual value the moment you run this you will see the output now you can see it says man miss mukesh and if i say any programming language so let's say if i create another programming language in this case i will say i know python what if I want to replace here? So I will say and I know program, which is nothing but Python. So you can see I can have multiple strings and it will be replaced with F strings. The moment I run this, you will see this is getting replaced here and this is getting replaced here. So this is actually quite easy. So this is little handy okay when it comes to format methods again you need to remember the indexes you can assign the key but here we have direct variables that variables we can assign into our string and we can use it right okay so i hope it is clear now so we discussed about what is string how we can do the call cat operation we discussed about the couple of methods we discussed about the escape sequences and now the very important part called indexing and slicing Okay, so let me show you indexing and slicing. But before we move to indexing and slicing, you need to understand the basic thing, which is again indexing here. So let's say if I'm writing a string called Python. So internally, these string will be represented by individual characters, right? So P will stand like if I say Python. So each character is having an index. Since index start with zero, so we'll say P with zero, Y with one, T with two, H with three, O with four and n with five and good thing about python it it also supports the negative index okay so again n will start with minus one minus two and it will continue till the beginning of the string so this is very important in order to understand the indexing and the slicing part 
very easy so let me go back to our pycharm and this time i will be creating a separate python file and this time i will say slicing demo maybe we'll call indexing and slicing both okay okay so let's start with indexing then we'll move to slicing they looks a little technical term but they're literally very easy so let's say i have again a sentence called sentence and this time i will say that i or i will say python is very easy the moment i say print method if i say sentence if i say zero so what does it mean that I'm expecting or I need the first character of this particular string? The moment I right click run, you can see I got P. If I want the second one, I can go with one and I will be getting answer as Y. So in this way, we can get any character from this string. Now, let me show you one interesting fact here that if I say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so six is basically a white space. Okay, so if I say six, the moment I run this, you will see blank output, but it's not a blank output. It's actually, it's printing the space, which anyways, we cannot see right now, right? So basically space is also considered. Now let's see some other interesting fact. Okay, what if I need the last character of this string okay so one way is i can count okay zero one two three and i can do that but what if i don't want to actually uh, you know get the i don't want to count the index of the last character so i can say this is my sentence and i can actually give minus one because as i discussed right i can use minus one in in case if i want the last character the moment i run this this time i will get y let me just use it five so that at least we'll get some output. Yeah, so you can see I got Y because we are coming in a reverse order. What if I say minus two, will it work? Yes, it will work for sure. And we got S this time, right? So this is how you can give the indexing. You can get the index, okay? And whatever index you will provide, you will get the value. Now let's talk about the slicing. Okay, in order to explain the slicing part now, I will be using another string this time and this time again I will use the name variable and I will say my name is Mukesh. And this time I want to do the slicing part. So first of all, I will say name. Then I will say start with one, which is, okay, Y. Or maybe we'll say start with index two till the end let's see what it prints okay maybe we can comment this because this is not needed now yeah two colon it will print till the end and it's saying name is Mukesh perfect but now I only want this name okay which is actually this one so if I say I want to start from two which is this right and I want to go till E so two three four five but if I use one more, which is six, let's see the output. So I have to give the six. Okay. Now you get the proper out output. So now you must be wondering why, because the last index, it is the stopping one. It will not count this one. It will stop at six position. So basically what it will do, it will start from two, but it will stop at six. So in our case, zero, one, Two, it will start from n and we have told till six so three four five six so it will stop at six but it will not consider this this is a small thing which you need to remember here okay otherwise you will always get confused so it will start is same but when we talk about n it will not include that particular index here okay sometimes it gets tricky so let me create another example then it will be very clear so let's say another string this time and this string I will say Python is very easy. Let me use the same example. I will say print. I just want to print is. Okay. So first of all, 
I will say name now in the bracket let's start so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 I want to start from the sixth okay colon 7 8 because I want is so I have to go till 8 then only I will get this start with 6 okay which is this 7 8 so 8 will not be included here so it will go till s so I will say 6 colon 8 now you just see the output this output I will comment otherwise you will get confused so just run it once and you can see we got the output call is so this is how this works so the last thing we need to talk about the step okay let the default step count is one but if you want to change the step count we can do that let's go ahead and use that so I will say start uh, I will be using this name and then I will say start with zero go till the end and the step count is two okay so if you don't give zero also it's by default assumed right so we can go in this manner also now earlier count was one but this time it is two so you can see the output now it is starting with p which is fine then it is going to t then o then i then v then r right and it goes from e, uh, like e and y because step count was two if i just change it to three you will see the output will be different and this time it's starting with p expected but now it is skipping y t and it's starting from h right then it's, it is skipping o and starting with i and so on so this is how you can change the step count now the last thing which is frequently asked interview questions okay how do you reverse the string so if i ask you the same thing like can we do that so if i just give colon colon and this time if i give the step count as minus one will it work let's see so i will comment these because we have seen the output now let's see this so it has reversed my order okay because i have given step count as negative number so what it will do it will actually it should start from here right one two three and four when we say reverse count so it actually starting from here or i will say it jumped from here to here then it is doing like this okay when you say minus one so now the step is in negative so it's jumping directly from here and it is going in this way so if i say minus two will it work yes it will work but this time it will be again the reverse order but step count will be two okay so you can play with this uh, i will try to create a couple of exercises and i will let you know in the next videos but in case if you find any issue during string let me know in the comment section and we will discuss many things about string in detail once we move it okay so this is what i had for today so i hope you enjoyed this session if you are new to this channel then please hit the like button subscribe to my channel share with your friends and if you find any issue in python uh, any issue related to string or any other thing in python let me know in the comment section you can also mail me to my email id which is mukesh one at the red learn hyphen automation.com and i will try my best to reply okay thank you so much guys have a nice day bye bye